Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new No Can Do record, Jimmy the Burnout. No Can Do is a West Coast rapper and founder of the Hellfire Club record label, home right now to some of the most progressive hip-hop music in the genre today. Music from Milo, Bus Driver, Open Mike Eagle. Together as a collective with some other MCs as well, like Rhetoric Ramirez, they dropped one of the better hip hop mixtapes of last year. I didn't love it, it was a little all over the place, but I think it still perfectly showcased the talents of Hellfire Club as a collective. There are some really standout tracks handled by individuals on the label from Milo or the song Barb's Over Breakfast, those are the bus driver, or the song Qualifiers from Open Mike Eagle, or Give a Fuck from No Can Do. And there are some pretty hyped collaborative and, and posse tracks on this LP too that I absolutely love, like uh, Degrassi Picture Day or DBT. And a lot of these sort of nerdy bars were matched with some of the more hard-hitting beats I had heard last year too, really eccentric bangers. So after the really unifying, attention-grabbing statement that was this tape, I think it's gonna be up to each member of Hellfire Club to be coming through with solo albums and collaborative albums that sound as good as the Hellfire mixtape, that sort of blow people away after the Hellfire mixtape. As a group, they essentially have to keep that momentum going, and No Can Do is kind of the first up to bat with Jimmy the Burnout. And my expectations for this record were pretty high, considering that he is the head of the label, considering that between the release of this tape and today, I've seen at least two really hyped live performances from this guy. But I ended up with a record that I only, at the end of the day, feel is pretty good. This LP to me is kind of a mixed bag in terms of sound, quality, it's just a hit or miss kind of album, and when the songs miss, it's not always for the same reason. Like on the song Little Green Monsters, which has one of the more wild, crazy trap beats on this entire LP, buzzing synth bass line, the tone of the instrumental on this track, and even the flow No Can Do comes through with once he pops in, uh, reminds me of like an Odd Future track or something like that. I wouldn't see this track being that uncomfortable sitting on that Odd Future Volume 2 tape that they put out a little while ago. There's some decent verses on this track, but I think the song really falls flat on his face once the hook pops in, which melodically is not a bad hook, lyrically is not a bad hook, but this female vocal pops in that is really cavernous, there's no change or significant contrast in the instrumental itself. It's almost like instead of exploding, the hook implodes. It's like there's a void there in between the verses. There's the song Too Much To Ask, which is a bit of a self-aware slow jam on this LP, but is, is nowhere near as captivating as some of the more hard-hitting tracks on this thing. And there's the song Any Day Now, which is a very slow-paced, slow-moving piece of jazz rap, which conceptually seems like a good idea. It does bring variety to the LP, but the momentum of the instrumental, the really weak, forgettable hook on this thing, and the just uninteresting flow that No Can Do performs with on this song makes it one of the worst on the entire LP. Not only that, but I feel like in this spot where everything is so slow that the enjoyability comes down to lyrics so much, No Can Do brings some of his most uninteresting bars. I'm a virus, I'm influenza. When I'm inspired, I'm influential. My people run this city like hardcore, a line about opening girls' legs like a car door, or he shines so bright he makes the sun squint. Then there's the song Lucid Dream as well, which seems to be a bit of a, a weird kind of epilogue toward the end of the LP. The beat has this vintage hip hop groove, really dated synthesizer bass line, a very stale R&B hook. I don't really get the sonic direction that this song is going in. However, I do like the very surreal dream influenced imagery and story that comes through on the lyrics on this track. You know, there are moments where I'm not really liking the lyrics, but I like the instrumental. There are moments where it's totally flipped and I'm loving what No Can Do is doing lyrically, but the beat just isn't doing much for me. But when songs on this LP do appeal to me through and through, it's because they've got great infectious energy, clever lines, good hook, like the song Never Look Better, which is a bit of a love-hate song where essentially No Can Do is rapping about having been with a girl or numerous girls uh, at, at some point in his life and coming along and sort of seeing them with another guy and saying, you know what, you never look better. You never look better since the day I've seen you with another dude, essentially. 
The song has a really deep voice hooked, a really heavy bassy beat, and all these self-deprecating lines that delivered in this way feel kind of creepy and sort of stalkerish. There's the song Break Even, which is this really playful, heavy, horn-backed piece of hip-hop magic that essentially becomes the soundtrack to the downtrodden in the rat race of today's economy. I live by the beat, I live by the beat, like you live check to check. The song addresses the financial situations of a few different people, as does the song Third World Hustle, which kind of delivers the same message but in a much darker way, becoming one of my favorite tracks on this entire LP in the process. Nocturnal Trap Beat on this thing with some gurgling bass tones just bubbling away in the background. And there's the song Grown Man Work, which is easily the most energetic, over-the-top, insane, hyped track on this entire LP. Just crazy banger beat on this thing. However, with all of its just forward momentum, just going at high velocity, just ah! The song still does not come off as crazy or as memorable or even as clever as some of the bangers on the Hellfire Club mixtape. I mean, I prefer No Can Do's Give a Fuck over this track, for example. Even with the hilarious refrain on this track, we don't play, we don't play. There are some tracks on this LP that are genuinely catchy as well, like the song Zero Hour, which has a beat that's helped along by Monopoly. Insanely psychedelic track on this thing. I love how eerie the organ sounds on this thing are. I love the smoky sound of the instrumental, the distant saxophone, the skittering, wailing synthesizer leads. I dig the flow on this track while the song is at a slow tempo. No Can Do changes it up every once in a while. It's definitely one of the better tracks on this LP lyrically, and, and, and it's definitely a top three instrumental on this thing as well. But I think what has even more single power on this LP is the Hellfire Club anthem, which has a great hook sung by Open Mike Eagle. I think one of the better moments of, of, of him singing on a rap song ever. The instrumental sounds like it samples like a really sad soundtrack moment from a kung fu movie, which is totally, totally awesome. It's a bit of an underdog track, you know, it, it, it really is the perfect anthem, in my opinion, for Hellfire as a collective. There are a few pretty funny sketches on this thing as well, one of which comes from Eric Andre, who has one of my favorite television shows on Adult Swim right now, but overall, I, I'm just sitting here with a pretty decent LP. Overall, while I think No Can Do is is versatile, you know, he does display versatility on this record. There is a lot of variety on this record. I do think that's one of the strongest points of this album. And I think he sticks out in the Hellfire Club Collective. You know, he's a voice in Hellfire that I think brings balance. I think Hellfire Club needs a guy who is as straightforward and is as blunt as No Can Do. However, I still think he's working to find his voice, his distinct voice, in the wider world of hip-hop. And uh, it's, it's not coming through completely on this album, but if he continues putting out music with Hellfire Club, which, I mean, obviously he will since he's fronting the label, but I'm saying if he, if he continues putting out music with people who are as eccentric as Bus Driver or Open Mic Eagle, Milo, no doubt that's going to happen. I'm feeling a strong six on this thing. Tran, Zition, if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, No Can Do, Jimmy the Burnout, Forever.